Dr. Kerry Mears was an industry researcher in the United States. After receiving his doctorate degree in biochemistry from the University of California, Berkeley, he was engaged in the genetic research at CETES Corporation, a biotechnology company. Living in California, he often spent the weekends at his cabin. The trips back and forth along the Pacific Coast Highway took three hours one way. He used uh, this travel time to think about his research. Every time he turned the steering wheel at the bent in the load, the car's headlamps illuminated the darkness. He was thinking about new ways to analyze DNA mutations. However, this repetitive process led him to conceive a new way to amplify DNA. For this idea, Dr. Mears was awarded the Nobel Prize in Chemistry in 1993. That is the polymerase chain reaction, or PCR. PCR has made it possible to amplify specific genes millions of times. It has been used in various applications, from diagnosis of diseases to gene cloning and gene identification. PCR is based on repetition. Temperatures are raised and lowered repeatedly in the process, that's all. You can use <coughs> such thermocyclers to change temperatures. Let's assume that there is a water solution uh, containing a small amount of double-stranded DNA. Here's double-stranded DNA. To initiate a reaction, two short pieces of synthesized single-strand DNA are added in large quantities. There are two. And these two synthetic DNAs correspond to both ends of double strand DNA you want to amplify. Here's a DNA you want to amplify. Then these two are complementary to the both ends. You also need to add a DNA deprecation enzyme called DNA polymerase that has been generated by bacteria that lives in high temperature hot springs. This is the enzyme. The solution is then Heat it to 95 degrees. <clears throat> As I mentioned earlier, DNA pairs are maintained by hydrogen bonds. Because hydrogen bonds dissociate at high temperatures, double strand DNA in the sample dissociate into single stranded DNAs. Like this. Then uh, you have uh, primers the uh, primers there, and polymerase here. Next, temperature is lowered to 65 or 70, de 70 degree. The short synthesized DNA oligonucleotides, uh, we call them the primers, undergo hydrogen bonding with the tagged DNA and partially form double-strand DNA. Like this. The DNA polymerase replicates this partial double-bonded DNA by um, elong uh, elongating the DNA primers until the complete double-strand DNA sequence is formed.
like that. In the case of DNA polymerase of hot spring bacteria, an elongation reaction is facilitated at about 70 degrees. Now that the target DNA has been doubled, uh, the temperature is raised to 95 degrees to create single-strand DNA. Uh, the temperature is again lowered to uh, 65 or 70 degree uh, then because the DNA primers are available in abundance they form partially double bonds double stranded DNA sequence with the target DNA again the DNA replication enzyme elongate the DNA primers in this way the target DNA is doubled every time the temperature is raised and lowered the DNA portions, um, the bracket by the two primers, are amplified by repeating this process over and over again. If this process is repeated 30 times, the target DNA increases by 2 to the power of 30, that is by about 1 billion times. What makes PCL incredible is it requires no more than a test tube, a few simple reagents, and a source of heat. Please take a look at the reference video, which summarizes the PCL process. This video is well made. Take a look at it. In the next video clip, I will explain how you can use PCL.